clinical practice guidelines are not difficult to use. As a matter of fact, practitioners will often find the way they're managing patients today are consistent with what is recommended in the guidelines. They'll be comforted to know that they are actually practicing at a level of the highest standard. And those who aren't using them today will find it very easy to implement them into their patient management. It does not take them off track to what they're doing. It's a supplement to the decision making of what is best for the patient. Actually, I just used the uh, guidelines uh, website with a patient of mine who had uh, chronic persistent neck pain. And um, it was a great experience. She absolutely found the information uh, so helpful, so valuable. And uh, what was great was uh, after the, you know, after we went through it and we talked about it, she just looked at me and she said, this is so fantastic. You chiropractors are so organized and so scientific and I'm so happy that, that you're doing this and you're thinking of us, the patients, and allowing us to access this information. So that was a very positive experience for me in my practice with, with a patient and that was quite recent. You know, it wasn't too long ago that as a practitioner you could get by in going through your entire career and practicing just as you did the day you graduated. But now we're seeing that the research findings that are coming out are altering what we need to be doing in practice. And those days are gone. You're going to have to stay up to date and find out what things are changing so that you can do the best job possible for your patients. I teach at the chiropractic college, so I use the guideline website a lot with my students. Uh, I think it's really important that we train our chiropractors to get into this framework right from the beginning before they cross that stage. So I use it uh, all the time in many different venues. Third parties and guidelines are an essential back and forth of communication. Either we are involved in the creation and promotion of guidelines or they're going to be imposed upon us. And the reality is groups are all trying to contain cost and have the best treatment for whether they're injured workers or people underneath their health plans. They want the best treatments possible and the guidelines are a way of trying to show here are some of the best practices available. For external stakeholders, you know, guidelines really help provide that framework of what is the best evidence and best practice out there. And certainly, you know, uh, if you're an advocacy body and you're going to the government and saying, look, you need to include chiropractic care at the healthcare table, and here are the guidelines that demonstrate how we can make an impact in low back pain and neck pain, uh, it just adds strength to our whole cause, to, to our messaging to them. I think the guidelines are something the profession has to welcome. They have to realize that this is something something that will move the profession forward. It's going to improve our ability to access the patients that we can help. And it's not something to fear, but it's something that you actually can help your, your practice, can help your patients to get the best results that you're trying to get, which is why we're all in practice to begin with.